Reed said once that, you know, of course, he was said to have had the most beautiful natural right. swing in golf. He, of course, he didn't want to say it to people who were complimenting him because they were trying to be nice. But in fact, he said he resented that. He said, I practiced till my hands bled. Okay. Mm. This was not easy for me. This natural swing was not natural. He also famously said that, that if he didn't play in practice for a week, he could see the difference yeah. in his game, oh, in yeah. his swing. Absolutely. Know. All the great performers, it, it, it's remarkable across fields, all mm -hmm. the great performers feel the same way. I talked the other day to a guy named Atul Gawande, yeah. who wrote Scholar, Harvard Medical School professor. A uh, very bright young man, uh, maybe 40-ish, and he's very interested in surgery and has talks about surgery. He, does, he says, it's not the hands. We live under this idea that surgeons have this great gift with their hands. He said, it's not that at all. It's their dedication to surgery. Yeah. It's the dedication yeah. to being able to, and the doing of it and the practice right. of surgery. Right. It's not some extraordinary... Yeah. It's great to hear that it's, about it, it, him, because in fact, and in fact there's been research on surgeons, yeah. which confirms everything else. It's the same story uh, over and over and over. Okay, so let's, you're a parent, you dedicate yeah. this to your two sons? Sons, two sons, sons. that's exactly right. So w w how do you, as a parent, yeah. as someone who wants their children yeah. to grow up, right and to be as good as they possibly can be right. in whatever it is that their passion is about. Right. Yet at the same time, you want them to find it. That's right. This becomes a real issue. And I mean, it's a genuine question for parents because the answer is not obvious. As you said much earlier, starting early is a big, big advantage because the advantages of deliberate practice are cumulative. Okay. Now, do you want to do what Earl Woods did with Tiger and start him at an age before he could possibly make any judgments of his own. Result, world's greatest golfer. However, we've all seen plenty of other cases where parents try to push the kids far too early into one activity or another, and the kid simply becomes angry and resentful. Or they burn out at 17. Or, uh, they burn out at 17 or earlier because they just can't take it anymore. Or do you think it's simply uh, barbaric to push a kid into one thing at the age of four rather than letting them do what they want? But if you just let them do what they want and you, they want to be in music or sports or something, they're probably not going to become world class. It's a real question that parents have to face. And I quote in the book the man who is, I think, the preeminent researcher in this, Anders Ericsson at Florida State University, who says, in his opinion, the research frontier in this whole field is parenting. Mm. It's how you raise the kids. The one thing that's interesting, too, about this, but this is the whole idea of life is a constant learning experience, yeah. is that the more you know about something, yeah. two things happen. You realize what you don't know, and you have an intense desire to know more. Right. It's exactly right. And this is important because what you're describing is a field where you personally, whoever you may be, you, you're getting some personal reward out of pursuing it, out of knowing more about it, and you just want to know more. And that gets to the really deep question of why some people will put themselves through the incredible work of doing this practice over and over and over for years and years. It's hard. It's pushing yourself. Uh, anytime you're trying to go beyond what you can currently do, by definition, you're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes as you push. Why do some people do it? It's because they want to know more. They just want to. And that's a really deep aspect of this, that people have to look inside themselves. I'm also intrigued by the idea of, of I mean, I think certain, for, for example, I mean, there are people 
like to do what they do well. Yes. And they like to practice what they do well. Yes. You know, I mean, if, and if you have some ability beyond what others do, some yeah. natural hand-eye coordination yeah. in sports, or yeah. maybe in terms of the piano, yeah. playing the piano or something, yeah. you know, you'll do it a little bit well, and that will be the incentive right. to get really good at it. Right. And it's getting really good at it right. that is the world-class performer you're right. talking about here. That's exactly right. And in fact, the researchers have identified just the phenomenon you're describing, and some of them call it the multiplier effect, which means somebody has, for whatever reason, a very small advantage in doing whatever it is they're doing. It may be some physical thing, their body is better uh, formed for swimming or throwing a baseball or whatever it may be. But whatever it is, that little advantage gets them a little extra attention from the teachers. So they get a little better. They feel a little, little more motivated. Then they start to get better teachers and that makes them better still. And this little advantage multiplies over and over and over until eventually they're much better. I, I'll close on this, I'm way yeah. over here. Uh, I was once watched Martina yeah. Navratilova. Yes. And she was in a round and there were all these young kids and somebody got up and said the following. Yeah. How many hours do I have to practice in order to be a champion? And she looked at this young woman and she said, with respect, yeah. if you ask that question, you will never be a champion, which is true. Right. right. You cannot. You, you, right. You can't be counting the hours and worrying about whether you have to do only a few more or a lot more. Yeah. You have to do, as you just said, whatever it takes. Talent is overrated, a provocative title for a fascinating book, subtitled What Really Separates World-Class Performers from Everybody Else, Some of What It Is We Have Been Talking About. Uh, Jeff Colvin, senior editor at large at Fortune. Thank you. Thank you, John. Pleasure.